the island that they were moving to. A few years later, they have to move them out of that island again. So there's no one leaving that island. So right now they kind of like people from Bikini and Hinuweta, Romalab and Romarik, uh, Romalab and Utrik, <clears throat> they scatter everywhere. They, I know they moved to Northeast, I think. Was that because of the fallout? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, China, there's stories of those that started to come here, move to Haiti, and most of them were from Bikini at all. So, so um, the bomb was still continuing for another few more years until 1957. That's when the bomb was ended. Um, people were affected, radioactive, um, jellyfish, baby were born, you know, food were contaminated, and uh, the ocean, the fish, and most of the um, the, um, the resources that we used to live with, they're no longer available for those people that they dropped the bombs. So um, <clears throat> there were times that the U.S. say that it is safe to go back home now, but um, after the people left, they were told again that, no, go back to where you're from again. The highlands are not safe yet. So Bikini, Rongla, uh, Rongrik, uh, they still know people live in those islands. And now, um, after the bomb test, then the U.S. says, okay, we need to work with the Marshallese government or the people to see if we can um, um, help them with the issues. Because right now, after the bomb testing, health issues was going up. Diabetes, you know, so many things that we never expected before, they started to, um, um, came out from nowhere. So um, what is called the Compact of Free Association, it began in 1986. So what the Compact does is it allowed the Marshallese people to use our passport. We don't have to apply for visa to come to U.S. But we can come and it says the under the Compact, we're permitted to come to U.S. Um, to find job, um, like here, leave, work, find education, and time restraint. That's mean uh, we don't have any timeline to go back. And we're allowed to stay in the U.S. according to the Compact of Free Association. Um, <clears throat> in return, the, the, um, the U.S. military, one of the U.S. military base is right now in the Marshall Island of Kwajalein Atoll, and it named after President Ronald Reagan. Um, so that's one of the places in the Pacific Highland that is very important to um, for the military base. Um, but then um, that's one of the reasons why you will see many Marshallese are traveling to U.S., coming to Oklahoma, go to Arkansas, um, Hawaii, and Oregon, and other places around the U.S. because they are they are taking the privilege of for the Compact of Free Association. So um, we're that's different. The original comp that's the original Compact. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. okay. So um, we are, we don't have any limits to stay in the U.S. So, so there's a story going. But they can't vote. I will come to that. Yeah, okay. so I that's have a slide. It's really mm -hmm. I, I have a that's why I specified yeah. this is the original one. Okay. I have a slide that we'll discuss okay. about that. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, in 1976, I put it right there, an Highland girl goes to mainland. <laughs> so when I talk about Highland girl goes to mainland, there's a story behind why we are here in Indian. Why Marshallese are here in here? It all began in Phillips University. Not sure how many of you been there, but um, when I moved in, I did not see that. It's only not NOC. But um, uh, folks at the library um, gave me some background of what uh, Phillips University was like. 
So uh, that's how I dig more information and try to do more research. So there's a story behind that, why the, um, who was the first Highlander girl that came to Haiti, uh, to mainland. Uh, but then um, these are the main purposes of why we travel around the world. Education, religion, employment, and health. For example, to Oklahoma. That's why we're here, some of them. So, um, back in 1945, the U.S. Navy, Dr. Elin, was stationed on Guadalajara Atoll. That's right after the war. So they were asking if any of them want to stay more longer as a volunteer. And he was wanting to be a doctor for the Marshallese in, on Guadalajara. So he stayed there and for there, um, he has three kids, but they were born in the U.S., but then went back again to the Highland. And one of the kids' um, name was um, Hallis. One of the child was named Hallis. And Hallis chose Phillips University in 1950s. So she came and attend uh, Phillips University in 1950s. And then he met this um, handsome man, Eldenburg. And then they met in 1952, and then married in 1955, and then um, they wanted to follow their Alice's dad. So they chose a mission that her dad chose, is to go back to the island. So they went to one of those islands like Koshrai, and being in the Highland, Honibai, and Marshall Island for 13 years, Hattis was able to speak Marshallese fluent, fluent, fluently. So this photo right here are the, are the very person that translated the Bible from English to the Marshallese, the Bible that we have today. So Hattis, who graduated from Phillips University, helped translate the Marshallese Bible from English to Marshallese. So um, they combined kind of like a group of church leaders to work on the translation and before they disseminate to other congregation. And uh, the lady with, that's Alice, and uh, the white one. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was asking me, which one? <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but they were Christians long before these yes. people came. So how did they, could they read any Bible in any language? No, before? no. Um, Hannes was able to learn Marshallese and then able to organize this uh, translation committee and translate the English version into Marshallese version. So they just learned Christianity orally before they got the Bible. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So um, what happened is in 1970, Eldon was called to be the uh, chaplain for the Protestant Church on Kwajalein at home. And um, 1977, that's the Highlander lady that moved to you to mainland. Uh, Lauren is the daughter of El um, Alice and Eldon. She's an American. But when she registered at Phillips, she was registered as a Highlander. But she wasn't born back in the Highland. But because she was in love with the people and love the culture and love the Highland, when they asked for her nationality, she said, I am a Marshallese <laughs> student. So that's the first one. But um, in 1981, the very first Marshallese enrolled in Phillips University. How that happened? That scholarship right there was organized by Hellis and uh, Eldenburg. So they sponsored one of the Marshallese first kid to come to attend Phillips University here. So after that, more people coming to Oklahoma. From the Pacific Highland to the Oklahoma Plains. Marshallese in Carfee County today there are almost 3,500 people. And I am only talking about Marshallese in Enid. We also have Marshallese in other counties like Kay, Oklahoma City, 
Comanche, Tulsa, and McCurden. We have 12 Marshallese churches here in Heenan. And, um, in Heenan. It's just only here in Heenan. So there is 12 of them. So the, the picture right there, I put it because it's an historic uh, picture. The church on North Enid is called the First Marshallese Assemblies of God Church. It's the first church in the entire U.S. of the Marshallese that was established. And same preacher is still there. Oh, wow. So, wow. Yeah, it is so unique. When you're talking about the Marshallese, um, you mentioned five other categories earlier on. Are those kind of incorporated? No. So no. you're talking so Marshallese. Just, so just the Marshallese, yes. Okay. When you say there's 3,500, that's only just the, from the Marshallese. Yeah. Just okay. only the Marshallese. Gotcha. But if I to count the others, I might have the number might be half. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Oklahoma is like home for us. For me also. So we dance, we go to school, we we go to the first birthday party. If you haven't been to one of them, please come. <laughs> you will enjoy it. Yes. Um, there's lots of food, and then they give you something when you go home. They always give uh, anyone come to our, our birthday party, like gifts, so you can go home with. Um, students, we have. Um, in high school, high school, in a high school is one of the biggest one in the entire state. Um, Longfellow is the second one, and Carfield Elementary School is the third one. Mm -hmm. So these are the very most Marshallese student goes to. Now, living in Oklahoma, we thought, um, for me, when I moved to Oklahoma in 2007. I was so excited when my in-laws called me and said, hey, be ready next week, you're coming to America. I was like, yay, I'm going to America. But guess what, I never knew that there's gonna be many doors, so many doors for me to open. So um, jumping on the plane in 2007 was a very good experience for me. And I stay there, I stay in Haiti for first year and second year, I knew that there are so many challenges. For me, for example, I have to find a rental house for myself and my family. Second one, I need to bring my family from overseas to heat it. Third one is when I, when mom was moving to, to stay with me, I noticed that she needs some help care. But there are so many challenges still ahead of us. So to seek to go home, that's my say and to poor to get better. So um, when we moved to Oklahoma, for example, there are other issues that we face today. Health, immigration status, education, employment, and housing. So some, agent, some agencies, sometimes when they don't understand how we structure and our culture sometimes is against, really against their policies. But for us, because we don't really understand their policies, we thought it's okay. So there is still here today some kind of a wall, and I really want to break that wall that will divide the, um, the diverse between us and them. Janet. You know, it's hard for me to stay silent. But I don't want you to run out of time before you talk about the renegotiation of the compact. Sure. Because that's so important for people yeah. to know. And I know you're getting low on time. I got two that's more That's very slides. critical. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> I love Janet all my life. <laughs> she always be by me. Whenever I go, she's following me. So. <laughs> she's my white mama. <laughs> <laughs> um, so go back again. Um, health issues is 2016. We we haul when all the micronation in Enid and also other state other places in Oklahoma. We went to the capital, a state capital, 
and that was on March 1st, oh, May something in 2016. So the purpose of our movement was to, um, because that was a bill that was introduced by our former Senator Anderson, and that bill was to have if Oklahoma can, in conjunction with the OSDAs and other agencies to help the Marshallese on expanding the Medicaid program. As of today, we still work and pay our taxes both to the state and federal, but we are ineligible for the Medicaid program. So for me and my mom, speaking of my mom, I have to go online two days, two years now, to apply for Affordable Care Hack so she can have insurance. So I am digging out of my own pocket to pay for her health insurance. But she is not eligible for Medicaid, and she is also ineligible for Medicare because she is not, she hasn't been working in the U.S. So that's, that's another issue. And immigration status, we send our kids to the public school, like every public school here in Haiti. But when it comes to the bond issue, we cannot vote because we're not the U.S. citizen. But one thing that really bothered me, because once you guys vote for the, for the um, what do we call the small computer? That this Chromebook. 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 We did not vote on that. But then our kids take home Chromebook with them. When I asked the, um, the people that are in control of the voting issue, they said, it's not our issue, it's the state issue. Because you're not U.S. citizen, you cannot vote. But we try to promote the voting, but we cannot do it. So that's our immigration status. I try to apply to be an officer, to be the first Marshallese officer in Oklahoma. And I learned so many things that I need to pass the test. But then when I <coughs> submit my paper, I cannot because I was not a U.S. citizen. But tomorrow, if I travel to Oregon, I can be an officer. Police, police officer. Yeah, police officer. Because they can serve in the military. But they do, they do serve in the military, and we are one of the biggest number in the military uh, to protect the peace. And we have several Marshallese veterans here in Enid. Yeah, my brother was retired two years ago. And he left yesterday, he visited our mom. But then he's, he fought for the war uh, uh, for almost 23 years. So, so that's one way that they can be a U.S. citizen, to apply for the military. And then you have to marry a U.S. citizen, or you have to apply for a U.S. citizen, which I tried, and I'm still fighting almost three years now. So, employment, housing, and education are almost the same issue. And main thing is if our immigration status. Um, in uh, 1996, the um, the ex the the, um, the Medicaid program, when they talk about it, that was under the uh, Bill Clinton's administration. They accidentally they got out from that Medicaid program. But we used to um, be in that Medicaid program, but not after 1996. Um, climate change is real, so. I have a question for you. So then are Marshallese concerned about the current political status, if that's gonna change anything in the future about being legal residents here versus yeah, being that's, supported and that kind of thing? That's one of the things that we established, the uh, Micronation Coalition. And under the Micronation Coalition, we have the political or policy something, policy uh, subcommittee, political policy subcommittee. And those are the, some of the focus that they will try to work on. One of the things that we've looked at is, for instance, in Oregon, a couple of years ago, they expanded Medicaid to include the COFA people. Uh, in, in, in Arkansas last year, they expanded their Medicaid to include the COFA kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. not, not adults, but kids. So there are some other states that are making progress there, not Oklahoma. So we're, we're, we're trying our best um, to see if we can get those help, kind of help. Um, 
So that video right there, you can write down the website <coughs> and watch it later on. And that video really explained the um, the um, climate change, how that affect the uh, the community and the people of the Marshall Island. Um, good. I'm sorry. I think it's just important to say that Oklahoma specifically doesn't include the Micronesian population under their health care coverage for the health, um, for Medicaid. Yeah, so all other populations, even people who are here illegally, are eligible after a certain amount of time, except for the Marshallese who are specifically not specifically excluded. Mm -hmm. For things like food stamps also. Yeah, thank you, Alison. Thank you. Yeah, specifically excluded. So, um, these are some of the um, articles and the the, uh, the thing that you can find about me and the job that I do with the community. Um, they're online available. You can go and read more about the um, the thing that we face today. Um, the um, the compact of free association is it got no ending. We don't have any ending for it. But what does will be in, in 2023 are the funding that are fund our government. So after 2023, U.S. no longer helped our country, but we still can come and go. One thing that really scared me right now is if it's in, in 2023, it might affect our FAFSA program to apply for the federal aid grant. As a Marshallese, they might, I don't know about if it, but that's one thing that I, I'm scared about. And that would affect the ability to have higher education? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. And lastly, I have this code right there, Martin Luther King's prophetic last speech. I have been to the mountain top, and for me, I have been to the mountain foot, but not even closer to the slope. Mm -hmm. so, in our language we say, that's mean, thank you very much. That's fine. One or two words, I think. <laughs> we have just a couple of minutes. Uh, maybe time for a question or two. Uh, would, would anyone have a question that's just kind of burning that they would, that they would like an answer to? Terry is an Olympic gold medalist, okay? Yes, yes. okay. I need some explanation. Tell us about this. <laughs> what? Are you under the bus? <laughs> That's why I asked Jolene to close the door. <laughs> Make sure you don't come in. <laughs> I, I've been an Olympian for the country four times. And, uh, for what? Olympian. Um, for, for sprinter. Uh, under 200 meter dash and 400 meter dash. Wow. So we got our cold medal in 1994, and I didn't bring it with me. Uh, wow. I I was one of the fastest guy in our country in the country. That's so. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Taylor, Taylor, yes. I think if you would introduce Jolene so that people can understand she's the one who teaches the Bibetic classes and some okay. other classes in Marshall Aids. Okay. Um, Joe, do you mind doing an introduction for us? Jolene, come on. Jolene Carbon. <laughs> Hi, Jolene. I had Jolene if she wanted to join me, and we're going to sing a short version of the Marshall Youth Song before you guys go. And make sure you guys, when you go, uh, grab anything on the table, and my, my business card is right there. So the, uh, and they're yeah. wonderful singers. Wonderful. So um, the music is about um, is about right. how we gathered today right. as a as a group. We 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 had fun. So how do you all do with the cold here? <laughs> how do you do with the cold weather? Um, we thought the highs are falling down. <laughs> the white thing are 
almost like high school. <laughs> we're, we're coming along. We're trying to adjust to the weather. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.
So when they are developing that, we'd love to. I knew you guys were working on the issue about that. It's yeah. over in the southeast uh -huh. uh, part of the I'm city. That, that yeah. 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 Now they're making part of it for a women's shelter, yeah. but the other part will be the for Marshallese, Chukis, awesome. Pacific Islanders. Okay. Did, did you meet Johannes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so when he comes back, he will help with that. Okay. So, Thanks for coming. It would be a great connection if you guys plan it together. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. It's very important. Okay. Those are beautiful. There we go. I have, I have plenty. You, sure? you did a wonderful job. Absolutely. And I learned so much today. I mean, I think I know a lot. I learn something new every time. Too. Oh, I learned a lot. I mean, this was just wonderful. You and I sometime are going to go over to Ponca City and talk to them and they help you. Okay. okay. This is my dear friend Karen, and she's heard me talk about you. We've known each other for years, and I really wanted to be here today because I knew next to nothing. And she, she's the one who said, Did you know about this today? And I said, Actually, I did. But, so, the whole crew would have been here. I really, I'm really offended. Awesome. Yes. By what well, we've done, yeah.